Hey guys and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be talking about Brazilian rainbow boas and pretty much just the species in general. Not any specific care or anything for today, but just the species, where they're from, when they were discovered, their lifespan, their breeding habits, all those things. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to cover about these guys is their scientific name, and as usual, I will probably butcher it, but I'm going to try. I'll put it on the screen so you guys can read it. I believe it is Espicrates centria. Hopefully, hopefully I didn't destroy that too bad, but either way, that's my attempt at saying that. And then obviously their common name is the Brazilian rainbow boa. And there's also a few subspecies of Brazilian rainbow boas. There's the central island rainbow boas. The Marajo Rainbow Boas, I think I said that right. And then the Espirito Santo Rainbow Boas. Again, I probably butchered all of those. But either way, those are the few subspecies. And then there's also Colombian Rainbow Boas. They're not a subspecies, but it's just another species of Rainbow Boas. I'm not going to talk about them today, but just know that there are Colombian ones as well as the Brazilian ones. Now these guys were discovered in 1935. Unfortunately, I couldn't figure out who discovered them, so if anyone knows, drop it in the comments because I would like to know. And they are not only native to Brazil, but also southern Venezuela, Suriname, uh, the coastal Gen Gena? I'm not sure how to say that. And then also the Amazon River Basin, so they're found in quite a few areas. Now as far as habitat, they like it where it's nice and humid, so they typically stay in like forested areas because they are also semi-arboreal, so you will find them climbing around sometimes. And they'll also get down in the water and soak sometimes, so keep that in mind if you want to keep these guys in captivity, that they are semi-arboreal, meaning they do like to climb sometimes, and they also like to get down in the water and soak. Now considering these guys like to hang out in thick forested areas that are near water, they also like it very humid. As babies, they typically hang out in areas where it's about 100%, and as adults, they tend to stay where it's more like 80. But either way, if you want to keep these guys in captivity, just keep that in mind that they like it very, very humid. The next thing I wanted to cover about these guys is their size and lifespan. As adults, they're typically anywhere from 4 to 6 feet and can weigh anywhere from 3 to 5 pounds. As far as lifespan, they typically live around 25 to 30 years. However, there was a record of a female reproducing at 24 years old, so they do have a pretty long lifespan, but the average does seem to be about 25 to 30 years. As far as appearance, these guys are fairly heavy bodied as adults. They're not as heavy bodied as say like a common boa, but they're also not as slender as an Amazon tree boa. They're kind of in between. They're not super super thick, but they're also not very slender. As far as coloration and appearance, the Brazilians are typically fairly red in color, and then they also have these distinct black rings on their back, along with the black splotches that have an orange crescent on their sides. They also have dark circles right there, and a bright white stomach. Another distinctive marking that these guys have would be the black lines on the top of their head and the black stripes above their lips. They're also very, very iridescent. I'm going to go ahead and insert a couple videos and images that show those very, very well. They're all pictures and videos of her, but I'm going to go ahead and throw those in. The reason I'm not showing them directly in this video is because she's a bit upset right now. She was hissing at me a moment ago, so I don't want to try to force her to show off markings too much by like trying to get her head too close to the camera. So that's why I'm not showing it directly, but I will go ahead and insert a couple videos and pictures. Another really interesting thing about these guys that I actually didn't know until I had her is that at night, their sides turn like white, like all the way up to the top of the black splotches on their sides. They keep their pattern, but like the background of it just turns completely white, which is really interesting. And like I said, I didn't know they did that and I still can't find anything on why they do it. I like, I don't know, I'm guessing it's kind of like how crested geckos fire up at night, that it's just like a showing off thing. So if anybody knows why their sides turn white at night, let me know, cause I'm really interested. I don't know if the subspecies do that or if the Colombian ones do that. I've only seen Brazilians do it. So if anyone knows, 
let me know in the comments. I'm gonna go ahead and put a picture in of her at night when she does that because it's really interesting and it's really, really cool. But like I said, I didn't know they did that and I don't know why they do that. I tried like Googling it and I couldn't find anything. So if anybody knows, put it in the comments because I would love to know. I'm really interested in why they do it. I'm assuming it's just kind of like how crested geckos fire up at night. But again, I don't know and I didn't know until I started working with her. So if anybody does, let me know. The next thing I wanted to cover about these guys is their breeding. They don't necessarily start breeding at a specific age. It's more once they reach four to four and a half feet long, and they typically breed from November to January. Now, since these guys are a species of boa, they do give live birth, and they typically have anywhere from 12 to 25 babies about 90 days after ovulation. The last thing I wanted to cover about these guys is their temper. As babies, they can be a little bit defensive and more bitey, but if you work with them, by the time they reach adulthood, they should be very calm. They're going to be pretty active when you're handling them. They're not as lazy as some snakes, but they're not going to be super bitey if you work with them. She's still getting used to people. I'm still trying to socialize her more. She's getting better. It does take time, just like with any reptile. But assuming you handle them and work with them, they can be very, very docile and easy to handle. And that wraps up today's video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it and that you learned something new. As always, make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe. Also check out Reptile Rave on Instagram and give me a follow there. I do appreciate it. But with that being said, that ends today's video, so I will see you in the next one.